Hello everybody and welcome back to the amazing court farm by Auction David. So before we start today, we need to check the weather forecast as I can see there is rain coming at some point. Okay, so it's going to be raining at 10. Uh, not for too long, maybe a couple of hours, and then it's going to be sunny in the afternoon. I was going to do grass cutting for silage in the pit, but that's going to have to wait now until this afternoon. It's fine though because we have other stuff to do. We need to first of all sample the field, the grass field, so that we know exactly what the situation is with it. So we know the pH, the nitrogen and the soil type. And also, we do need to uh, start the drilling in one of these two fields. Well, both of them actually. One of them is the one which we harvested in the previous episode, the first episode that was this one. And we have another bigger field over there, which is already cultivated and ready to go. So lime is something which is going to be used in this series because we're running precision farming we do have to spread lime but it does say that the pH value is okay so um, it's not perfect but it is okay so I think to save money because we don't actually have a spreader which can spread lime we do have a spreader yes we have this one here and that one can only do fertilizer we would have to rent either this one or this one I don't think that no yeah, basically either of these two and at this stage, we don't really have the money uh, aside for that. We want to be able to get some crops in the ground first. So, um, yes, we'll live with what we have with the pH, but we will, of course, apply nitrogen. And we're going to have to rent the drill because it's not something that we have on the farm. But that's fine because it means I can rent a big drill or a bigger drill. <laughs> um, not massive. I will, of course, be keeping an eye on the used machines. Those things will be handy. But, yeah, we'll come on to the drilling a bit later and the mowing. But first, we must just sample that field. So we need the Landini. Here we go. Uh, the sampler is actually directly in front of us. So we'll just reattach that. And the grass field is over to our left. I better put the time to times five or six. I think that's a, a good speed. Right, this is where we have a bit of mud. It hasn't rained recently though, so it's not super muddy. Okay. So it's going to be good to understand this field. To know what we actually have. If I put this into work mode, we can see on the minimap it's opened up the circle. I can start to do some samples in good locations. So the first one is going to be here. Again, it'll probably be a few hundred pounds. I don't think it'll be over a thousand pounds for this field but maybe 700 pounds roughly. I just don't want to start mowing before the rain comes. It would just be silly. So I'll whiz round, taking samples, and then we can find out what soil type we have. Hopefully, it is a good soil type. I'm going to guess... Well, is it loamy sand? No, sandy loam. I'm going to guess sandy loam for... Well, certainly this area, judging by what we have in 56. And we'll put our final sample just here. And then we can send these results off to the lab. Looks like it was 13 in total. Done. Right, so yeah. They should be back in just a minute. We'll start to head back to the farm. Pack up the equipment. It all folds up. 650! I said 700, so it was even cheaper. Nice. And we will now have the results. So when we get back to the shed, then open up the minimap, and we'll see exactly what we're dealing with. I'd like to get some rabbits today too. I'm not too sure exactly what the rabbits eat, uh, so I don't want to buy them if I can't feed them, that'd be no good. And we are running Maze Plus, so it's all changed, the, the food types that we're actually giving to animals. Uh, okay, so yes, most of it is the sandy loam, but this middle piece is even better. It is loam, and still no sign of silty clay. I'm very happy about that. 
I don't know if the map has any. It might be that there is no sort of clay on the map. I would have thought there would be some, but we haven't found it yet. And in fact, that means unless there's someone like this area, we don't actually have any on the farm. So there we go. All very good news. Right, this is our equipment shed just here. And this takes us out the front, where we have the Matty Ferguson ready to go with the mowing once it's rained. The chickens are all here. We bought these in the first episode. <laughs> Look at it run. Oh, we mustn't make fun of the chickens. Sorry, chickens. Um, they are cute, aren't they? Yes, so bunnies, bunny rabbits. Let us go and look into them. This is where they are, if we had any. So, yeah, I think if we can just... They can't be expensive, can they? They really can't be expensive. Where's the trigger? I've turned my triggers off. Uh, baby rabbits and fully grown rabbits. They are the same price. So I guess we should just get rabbits. And we don't need 30. If we just get a thousand pounds worth, so 10 of them, that would be good. There we go. And then I guess they're going to appear on here. Yeah, so what exactly do they need? Well, I guess I'll have to do some research into the food they eat. Like it normally says under total capacity effectiveness what the actual food categories are. Um, but anyway, yes, I can give them water. I've just bought the tanker. We're going to need it anyway for the cows when we buy them. And probably sheep as well. So I think we'll use the Landini. And get that tanker brought back. We're really just waiting for this rain to come and go. But these chickens should be producing eggs for us. Yeah, so I don't think I've actually shown going to the store yet in a video. I don't think we actually drove there in the first episode. I have been there because I set up the farm with the new tractor and stuff. But here's the campground. We turn right out of here. And then really we just keep going. We go past the lovely windmill. It's a fairly straight line to the store. Mind the wildlife. Ah, oh, the bite always run in front of you. <laughs> There's the windmill. That is so well done. Well, the whole map is. But yeah, I love the windmill. I especially love the windmill. There's the pub. And then when we drop down this hill, we'll end up at the store. Well, the store will be on the left hand side. Go past this forest. Yeah, so if we're ever pulling something really heavy up from the store, we will obviously have to go up this hill. Alright, here we are. So there it is, the water bowser. It's got a little Honda generator on it, a little Honda pump. As you can see. Okay, well this won't be too heavy for it. <laughs> but maybe one day, when we buy a big trailer or something. We do have a water tank in the yard, so we can fill it up from there. Uh, it might charge us. We'll just have to see. And here we are home again. Yes, that grass field there is ours. I haven't fully decided what we're going to do with it yet. We could cut it, we could plant trees on it. We could build on it, I suppose. Oh yeah, a few people were asking about horses. I am looking to get horses further into the series. Right, so let's just get some water first of all. just here and yes we do need to pay for it so the alternative would be to find a watercourse like a river and fill it up from there 
But for now, yeah, this is fine. We don't even need much. 30% should be plenty. And I think if we traverse into the shed, I would then be able to give them their water. Oh, not even as far as the shed. We can stay outside. Brilliant. So that has given them a full trough of water. So at least they are now alive. They can live. Oh, they're so cute. I've seen them stand upon their back legs. Um, is anybody going to do it? Anyone want to do tricks? Yes. There we are. Look at you, you little show off. <laughs> oh, you love it. With your pink ears. Oh. Nothing stopping it now. They'll all be doing it. How lovely. Uh, so yeah, the water has gone into these little dishes. And I suppose the red ones are for food. Uh, once we have the food. Okay, so where is this rain? Should be here within about an hour. Actually, I might as well just keep this water tanker in the shed. If I can do. Can I keep it in there? Yep. Yeah. That'll do nicely. Now, we are going to have to pick up this grass and put it into the pit. I think the mows that we have are not going to create swaths, so we are going to also have to either rent or buy a windrower. Just like all my series now, I'm not going to do a massive amount of silage. We're just doing silage to get us going, so that we can actually progress nicely. I was going to say maybe we can do the drilling first, but no, it's... It should be raining by 10, that's a few minutes. If I just speed up the time ever so slightly, how long is it going to be until that rain comes? Ah, there we go, so it was just a few minutes later. It's raining! But things can't grow without the rain, and I love the wind effects. You can see the wind effects on the grass, and you can also see it on crops. Actually feels like it's windy. So we'll just sit this out. And then hopefully we can uh, mow later. I can see a rainbow. It's definitely a rainbow there. I'll go and get a cup of coffee. There we are. Nice living room. Now, which is the kitchen? That was a good guess. Oh, it was worth coming in for. I'll see you later. The rain has just stopped. I want to give it a few minutes to dry out. But I've had my coffee. I've been doing some filing. A bit of paperwork. Uh, and I couldn't eat all of those. There's just too many. But they were delicious. Okay, let's head back outside again. I probably should have come in through the porch. Anyway, that's fine. What are you looking at? Oh, I left the washing out. Well, it's got a double wash now. Right, let's get this started. Yeah, so no rush. We don't need to rush through September anymore. It is very important I do drill both of those fields. I want one of them to be linseed and the other one to be field beans. Both new crops to this map. I've never done either of them before. So I'm really looking forward to it. But we must get the grass in. We've got to get the uh, pit fermenting. Yeah, it's very bumpy through there. It's a big field. It's a very big field. We will certainly have to rent a decent sized windrower and also a forage wagon but at least we have a rear mower as well or should I say a front mower as well because I actually did buy the front mower in addition to the rear mower we should have the power yep right before I go any further this wants to be conditioned. 
on both of them. So that should change the look of that. There we go. And that also means that we can put it into the pit. We should be able to ferment it. As I said, I am new to uh, Maze Plus in FS22. I did use Maze Plus in, in FS19, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. But it's been a while now since I've actually used it, so I have pretty much forgotten how it works exactly. But I am reading the help guides, and they are helpful. They're very well done, actually. And uh, yeah, just take a bit of time to get everything to sink in. But this should be fine. Having it conditioned should allow me to put it into the pit, should allow me to ferment it. Whereas if I don't condition it, it's just fresh grass. So yeah, I don't think that would work for silage. I believe you do need a mower with a conditioner. I think you can see the conditioner, can't you, underneath the mower? I don't know much about these, but you must be able to see something. Yeah, I don't know what I'm looking at exactly, but there is obviously some kind of conditioner under there. <laughs> right, let's continue. Let's get this cut and then we can row it up. Oh yeah, and I'm loving the 7S. It's a great tractor. We're getting there. I think, actually, looking at this field again, it might be worth doing 50% silage and 50% hay. As it is September, we want to get some hay in storage. Um, I think that we'll be okay tedding conditioned grass. Yeah, that should be fine. Um, but of course, <laughs> yes, I will soon find out. So really, we need a windrower and we need a tether. We also need to get that field done. The drilling in, in both of those fields. I think we have until October, but I'm going to slow down time. There's no rush, there's no rule either about how fast we have to progress through each month. I also could add an extra day to each month, like two days per month, but I think really one day per month is fine for me. I do find it fairly balanced at that. Now I wonder if we can get this last piece done in one pass. We are fairly wide. Is it going to be annoying? Is it going to leave a slither? I think actually it's made to measure. Yep. That's looking great. There is also a bit down there which I haven't done. So we'll just clean that up. But that is this field cut and that will be the last cut of the year that's all we really need though maybe I should do 75% silage because we do need some silage for the cows when we get them which will likely be in the winter I don't know I'll probably just do it roughly so that can be folded up we can pop this back into the shed. So 
let's go around here. Go through the chickens. Sorry, chickens. And I think I might reverse him. Okay, then we can just take the rear mower off first. And, yeah, I'll have the tail swing. Right, there we go. Lovely. And the front mower, that can go over here. It'll make it easier to fit. Perfect. So let's take a look into the windrower and tether categories. I think I might actually enable a mod for these. Oh, actually that looks amazing. I would love to go with this. We also have that mod, which is actually cheaper. Um, it is huge. I don't even know how we'd get that into the field. So we'll, we'll just lease this. It's not stupidly expensive. And we will have a look into the uh, tethers. So tethers, we should be all right with this one, I suppose. Because we're only doing half the field. And also it means we can bring both back at the same time, which would be really handy. So let's get over to the store once again. We'll get those picked up, get them brought over here, and then we can do that grass field. And I think we'll probably collect it all up and bale it all. Some of it's going to be collected, some of it will be baled. Uh, in the next episode, I really would love to start the drilling today. I think if we could, what, what would be first? I don't know if it actually matters. So you can see here, linseed and field beans, they're both the same, September, October. So we can do either. A caravanist. Not again. I don't want to run you over. Stop running into the road. We pop that tether onto the front of the tractor. That's why it's always handy to have the front three-point linkage. We can then reverse and we can get the uh, windrow on the back. These are the sort of things which we'll own eventually. We won't have to rent them. But at this stage, we do have to rent them. Right, this is going to take a bit of skill getting out of here. When we go into the field, I will not have the tether on the front. So that'll make that easier. It's pulling it up the hill fine, no problem at all. I want to do the tedding first. Firstly to see if I've done it correctly, and also so the grass can start to dry out. It's drying out at the moment on the top side, but yeah, we need to mix it up a bit. If you weren't aware, this map is actually set in Somerset. Banwell. I will keep the windrow on this tractor and we'll put the tether onto the Landini. We'll just back up for now. Give the Landini some space. Ah, oh, look, a hen all on its own. They're all going crazy over here. They're excited to see the tether. Whenever I start a Let's Play, I always think, have I chosen the right machines to start off with? And I think for this series, I'm very happy. I think these two tractors are the right size. We don't have too much, like we don't have too many tractors or 
too high a horsepower. Uh, there's still plenty of space for us to grow and improve. We just have enough to be able to do all the jobs properly. So the lower half of the field can be the hay, so that we're not always driving over it. We should have some options on here. Yes, so Tedder Stage is currently base game. There is conditioned, semi-dry, and hay. Uh, I believe we can actually skip the stages and go straight to hay. But I don't really want to do that. We want to have a, a, a slight role play going on here. So I think we're going to do semi-dry. Because you don't tend to just turn freshly mowed grass over and just instantly get hay. It's all very <laughs> fast, that. So we want to have semi-dry. And, um, yeah, then we can next time tell it again. We have to tell it twice to get the uh, hay. Now, because of this system, which I really love, if it was to rain on the hay, we could then set it back to semi-dry and tell it again to, to mix it up. Make it look like we're mixing it back up again. Uh, so you could roleplay that. Because, obviously, if it pours with rain on your hay when it's all nicely done, then you're probably going to want to mix it up again to dry out the bit that's underneath. Otherwise it's going to stay damp. So that's a really nice idea. But I really don't mind doing it twice because it's not going to be a massive area. And as it turns out, I've chosen a tether which is perfect in size. This is a great size. Right, that should do. That's probably about 40%, which is uh, that's about what we need. So this will take just a few minutes. Can't decide if I should take that swath, but I think I should do. Also, I think the actual hay colour is much more realistic than the base game hay colour. It doesn't really look like hay, it looks more like the semi-dry. Alright, so we now know that everything from this point onwards wants to be tethered. So I can get that done. Then we can bring the Massey Ferguson in and we can windrow the rest of it. Now continue to dry on the other side. Nobody, nobody like you. We can actually keep this tractor in the field. Keep it down here. And I think it's going to be baled. We'll just Heston bail it, I guess. Although it would be nice to have, I, I don't really like round bales, but I think maybe it would be nice to have a round baler as well, in addition to, because with straw I much prefer to have Heston's. Uh, hay is sort of 50-50, sometimes I prefer Heston if we're selling it, but if we're using it in a mixer, quadrant or round would be better. Smaller quantities. Right, and now it's this tractor's turn. I'll have to try and get through the, <laughs> the the barrier of chickens. Excuse me, chickens. Slalom through them. Those are the bells that we got in the previous episode from that field over there. We will have to close the gate. No, 
It's pretty big. It means we can do it nice and quickly. I guess we can just mix the fresh grass that we have up there into the conditioned grass. Anything that we miss, we can get with the tether. So that's producing. A, a good sized swath, it's not too big or anything. Absolutely perfect. If we were doing loads of fields, I think I'd probably get a forage harvester to pick up and chop the grass. But as it is just this one field, for the time being, we'll just get a, a forage wagon. We'll throw it into the pit next time, we'll get it fermenting, and then we can move on. It does look neat when you use a big windrower. I love it, I'd love to buy this. This is what we can aim for in the future. Oh yeah, I was also going to have a look into the price of linseed and field beans when you sell them. I can imagine uh, linseed especially is expensive. Let's just do this piece over here. that in and that'll be the wind drawing done ready for collecting next time yeah so I don't think we're actually going to manage to get onto drilling today unfortunately but we can do it next time without a doubt so if we go into the prices list we should find let's see here yeah carrots I know you can buy carrots that's a food type in maize plus um there we go there's linseed okay not quite as high as i was expecting so about the same sort of price as wheat but maybe you get more of it possibly uh field beans wow field beans are really expensive but maybe you get less of them <laughs> who knows uh and surprisingly yeah july is the best time for them i guess yeah they're harvested a bit later on, so that's when it absolutely plummets. So you want to be selling just before the next harvest, which we can do, uh, but it means we have to keep hold of them. Anyway, that is it for today. As I said, we'll do the drilling next time, and we'll get this field totally sorted. We'll ted the hay, we'll clear all this, we'll get it all compacted in the pit. It's a big episode coming up, so stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. Until next time, see you again soon. Bye for now.